second story um second story is uh actually um there's a few stories here together so okay this is complicated because some of these i want to tell as part of an overall story of multiple stories so this is where i get a long thing but i, I guess i'll try to break it up um or at least i'll, I'll probably do a couple run together so anyway, let, let's dive in and see how we go. The first thing I want to mention, hey, to YY, good to, good to see. <laughs> uh, yes, and Thomas H, also good to see uh, you there in the chat. And the J vlog, oops, late, no problem. We're just getting into the second one. You just missed out on the Olympic uh, alcohol and withholding of condoms. Um, so yes, vaccinations. Vaccinations are interesting. Here's a graph right now of um, doses administered per 100 people. And as you can see, Japan is not... Uh, China and South Korea are still higher than um, Japan. In fact, no, this won't jump to the other graph. But as you can see, Japan's gone. That red line down the bottom, it's gone from being terrible to going pretty well. It's been late, uh, but it is accelerating and it is continuing to accelerate for the reasons I'm about to show. So um, it's funny, this is what happens when a government realizes in mid-May that they are going to be kicked out of power if they don't actually uh, do something about making sure that people can get vaccinated, given that they, it feels like the government had abandoned the country uh, ahead of the Olympics and whatnot. And uh, right now, uh, I can speak for myself as well. That I got a heads up the other day from work that uh, these work vaccinations, I'm going to be able to get one of those. So we actually have multiple options coming up right now. And I'll go through what those are. But if you're in Tokyo anyway, the first is that the mass vaccination centers for 10,000 people a day in Otomachi being done by the self-defense forces. Turns out that people, as I mentioned last week, um, some of them are only 20% of the capacity is actually being booked by elderly. Most elderly don't want to travel to the center city of Tokyo to, to get a vaccination. They just want to do it locally. So they are choosing to do that, and the result is is that you know they've got all of this capacity free that's not being used. So the government said, "Ah, screw it. Okay, everyone over 18 can can book a vaccination in Otomachi if they want it, or they can do it locally uh, when that becomes available." But the point is, for most people under 65, you still can't make reservations for vaccinations yet. So if you have a voucher from your local city council uh, and you live in Tokyo, you can book for Otomachi right now and go and get a shot like this week. Which is awesome, except I live in one of the uh, four, 14, there are 14 districts, so there are nine districts in Tokyo that have not handed out vouchers to under 65 year olds yet. And I live in one of those, so I don't have my voucher with my vaccination number that they need to check off to give me, to allow me to make a reservation in Otomachi. So I can't go, but if you're lucky enough to live in one of the 14 districts in Tokyo that has issued vouchers to people under 65, you can go and book your uh, mass vaccination center Moderna shot. And uh, good for you. You should totally go and do that if you do that. If not, you're in the same situation as uh, oh, um, your, your next option, which is the option I have, it turns out, is uh, many companies are going to be um, issuing. Uh, the government said that they would, they've got this stockpile of Moderna vaccines, and they've said they'll give them to any company that can take care of vaccinating their employees and their households themselves. Um, they will just give for free the vaccines to the companies and the companies will use their own co company doctors to administer them. So you have cases like uh, SoftBank has said, yeah, we'll take 250,000 vaccines and we will vaccinate all of our employees as well as their households, as well as uh, Masayoshi Son has also promised to vaccinate um, subcontractors and support people and, and people in towns around uh, so SoftBank facilities. So actually, you know, again, he, the, a lot of the heavy lifting, and right now the airlines have already started vaccinating their employees, and yeah, I'm going to be able to do that at work, hopefully within a couple of weeks. Um, hopefully this week I'll get the details on that, but I, I, I can get a Moderna shot, and, and you know, just as effective as the Pfizer one, so I'm just going straight for that. And you don't need the voucher to do the, the company uh, vaccinations. So basically, with all of these companies that have gone and taken up the government offer of uh, being able to vaccinate all their employees, which of course then means you can go back to the office and stuff like that, and that is just about to start that line is going to go up even more vertically. So actually, we're already at a million shots a day. And with the corporate uh, vaccinations, it's probably going to get like way ahead of that. So I think we're going to get to a point very, very soon where um, everybody who... The, the, the government promised that everyone who wants to be vaccinated uh, will be able to have been vaccinated by November. And the right things are going, it could be sooner than that. It could actually be October. Um, but what's interesting is that unlike in other countries where they talk about with the vaccine rollout, like in America, they've been doing it for a long time and they're very focused on getting to 70%, getting to herd immunity. Um, 
and uh, in you know a lot of countries are sort of focusing on how do we get 70 percent of the population remembering that that kids can't get vaccinated and a certain percentage of the population for various reasons like allergies and whatnot also might not be able to be vaccinated so you've got to have 70 percent of the population excluding all the people that can't be vaccinated you know including those people so you, you really need like practically everybody who can be vaccinated to be vaccinated in order for the vaccine to actually work the same way that you have with the mumps vaccinations that they give babies they try to make they make it mandatory and many countries like in new zealand have the the, the mumps rubella shots because that's the only way you make sure that the disease like is eliminated otherwise it's always going to spread around on the community and there's always going to be a risk so i know america's confronting that japan isn't really confronting that yet because right now the issue in japan is the the people who want vaccines and can't get it are freaking out and the government's afraid of them so it's focusing on making sure everyone who wants vaccines can get it and they're focusing on the voluntary aspect they're focusing on the aspect that these corporate vaccinations are for people who want them um, of course you have multiple options you can get it from your local city council you can get it from the self-defense forces office you can get it from your company or you can decide if you know you're not actually required to get it and there's no real pressure to go get it at the moment they're just giving you the options However, the discussion that is starting to happen in Japan is the discussion in this uh, kind of left-wing newspaper, the Tokyo Shimbun. Uh, they're talking about the idea that people who are hesitant, who do not want to get vaccinated or are not sure about it, feel like they are under pressure and may be subject to discriminatory sanction if they do not get vaccinated, even though they have their own reasons for not doing it. And it's starting to raise an interesting question. Um, you know, um, if if you have the workplace vaccinations and then you go back to work, you know, like I'm sure in a country like Japan, there are going to be companies that are going to say people who are not vaccinated will not be allowed to come back to work or you'll need proof of vaccination to be able to come back into the office or something like that. Or you'll need to take special measures. Like I say, people will be singled out or treated differently. Um, and accompanying this as well, I should also point out the government has decided that from September they will start issuing uh, paper document based uh, uh, vaccine passports. Um, indicating that people has proof that people have been vaccinated. The idea being that most countries are going to reopen international travel on the basis that you have um, proof that you've been vaccinated for that. And of course, well, a lot of countries are also looking at setting up, as well as Japan is setting up a, a digital passport system for uh, tracking, basically carrying evidence that you've been vaccinated, uh, which can be used for reopening travel. And, and Japan is keen for that, uh, both for both ways travel, frankly. So they're setting up that framework from uh, from July, but of course there are countries like Israel that have made actual used vaccine passports for things like going to the movies and restaurants and so on as well. And it's not really clear what the application of that's going to be, but people who are hesitant are worried that they are going to face discrimination for not getting vaccinated. And they're questioning where, while everyone is still emphasizing that the vaccinations are voluntary, um, will they be discriminated against? And it's kind of tough. Uh, certainly, I, I think it's legitimate to actually uh, have different rights based upon vaccinations. And this is totally normal. When I lived in Singapore as a kid, the whole family had to have malaria vaccinations before we went to Singapore. That was mandatory. I grew up in New Zealand. We have mandatory shots as babies. They, they're not actually mandatory in Japan, by the way. And there is a history in Japan. There have been some cases of, uh, I think it was the HPV uh, vaccines, that they, they had a bad batch that caused people um, illness and whatnot. So they've had some bad experiences in Japan, which increases the city. It's not so much a pure anti-vax. It's not people believe it's going to give them 5G. It's just people not sure whether they really want to inject something. If they're, if they're, if it's not put to them in a way that, you know, that you, that you have to do it. Um, so this is the thing. I really It really makes me wonder how far, while it's great that right now the availability of vaccines is going through the roof in Japan, and after being very slow getting started, it is very, very good that now... I'm looking forward myself to hopefully getting my first shot um, and it's Moderna so it's four weeks apart but hopefully in the next couple of weeks and then maybe before August perhaps even I could be um, you know fully vaccinated uh, I'm looking forward to that but there's a question about how far in Japanese society is that going to reach and is it going to be like America where you're going to have to start having like a free guns in order to <laughs> free ammo or you know what, it, what, what it, all, all the sort of gimmicks that they're using to, to incentivize people to get vaccinated frankly which is to be responsible but there again obviously social responsibility is not a big motivator for a lot of people um, my personal view on this is that um, 
I certainly don't think it's appropriate just to bully or harass people or, you know, like bullying is not justified for anybody, even if they did something bad. We have this reflex. That's a human reflex. It exists in Japan just the same as in Western countries. But I do feel like in um, countries like New Zealand and America, the sort of uh, Protestant sort of culture colonized countries. Uh, or that have that foundation, there is this kind of self-righteous uh, entitlement to be a bigot <laughs> that we have the, the idea that, you know, you have so many people who feel like uh, who used biblical justification for uh, mistreating uh, black people or for uh, mistreat, you know, for for uh, discriminating uh, violently against like uh, gay people and so on. And they use religious justification for it. And it's like they have a green light to be bullies. And the thing is, even if you think someone, even if someone is an actual convicted criminal, uh, you know, say you have someone at your work who has a criminal conviction, that doesn't entitle you to bully them. <laughs> I mean, there might be restrictions on employment that they might, you know, have, have certain obligations to society. They might have to report to a parole officer, but you're not entitled to bully them. Um, and I think it's the same. I don't think I don't think it's appropriate to, you know, I, th I think it's fair to be concerned about policing, um, you know, like social bullying of people who choose not to be vaccinated. But at the same time, I also think it's totally fine for there to be, um, you know, safety based uh, discrimination on, on, on what people who cannot be vaccinated or choose not to be vaccinated can do, you know. It, um, and I think there needs to be a switch in messaging to emphasizing the, the goal of getting to 70% rates. And, and if nothing else, if social responsibility doesn't motivate you, which it should, but it doesn't really nowadays, um, then what I think should motivate you is the things that will happen to you if you get it. And I know that there's so many people who talk kind of like, um, if... There's kind of a thing that, yes, it's, it's it's largely only fatal for people who are like above 50 or who are obese or have diabetes or cases like that, um, you know, so sort of preconditions. Um, so if you're like under 50 and reasonably healthy or whatever, I, I know a lot of people think it won't happen to them. But even people, even young people who, who catch it, the, the, the cases, I mean, again, it, it messes up your blood and the organs that depend on your blood. And it's now been established, it shrinks parts of the brain. Um, that affects smell. Uh, you can lose your sense of smell. You can lose your memory or, or your ability to retain memories. It can cause you basically brain damage. People end up needing dialysis. It can mess up the kidneys and the liver. Um, people lose the ability to sleep, to taste. Uh, they lose their memory. Um, and, you know, it goes on for years after. So even people who have mild cases of COVID, like it's a scary, scary, I mean, I would get vaccinated. It's not so much that I'm afraid of dying from it. It's really, well, it's two things for me. I don't want to be responsible for passing it on to other people that obviously could have life and danger. But it's not just the life endangering things, it's everything else, um, respiratory problems, brain problems, kidney problems, um, you know, the, the long term, the hair loss doesn't scare me so much, but that's another thing again. It's a, um, so, you know, I, I don't think that um, there's so much emphasis. I think the media is playing so much that, you know, one person and every hundred thousand has blood clots from the AstraZeneca and everyone stops wanting to get shots in places like Australia and the UK when, you know, they should be spending more time focusing on why the other 10,000 people <laughs> Um, you know, really should get the shot, which is this. And the consequences are pretty awful. So, um, yeah, you know, um, the, the news is doing a little bit of it, but that's why I'm going to get vaccinated. So the vaccine passports and, um, yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's what's going on at the moment. Certainly it's great that there are more vaccinations. And the question is, you know, how far is it going to go? How much is hesitancy going to come into it? I'm going to jump into the comments. I've been flipping around, so it hasn't, uh, the screen hasn't died. But back into the comments anyway, um, let me, I see some see some new people joining, so let me see if I can go back far enough to catch everyone. Tokyo 503, I think I said hello to before. Odie Jr. indeed brings the boom as always. Good to see you. To YY, I think I just said hello to before. Um, boom, 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 I'm just going for names. Ko Hoshino, good to see you again. Good to have you back in the last few episodes. Uh, good to see you. Thomas H. indeed, still talking about condoms up here, so I'm, I know I've got a got a bit too far back we've got guys english world good to see you good evening shubas late again but no worries uh good to have our uh our person in panama uh buenos dias when i started i guess it's buenos dias for you uh question for you shubas how is is the accent is the spanish accent in panama is it like close to colombia or is it like venezuela or like what, what's it close to I, I i don't know what the uh, panamanian uh, spanish accent sounds like i've been listening to um malua lately 
Uh, and I must admit, it's kind of like a, the Colombian accent. I, I didn't really know it, but I've been kind of picking it up from his. Uh, I find it a lot easier than the Caribbean accents to understand. I, I, I majored in Spanish at university. When I went to Argentina, man, I, I was in Spain for three months and then I went to Argentina. I love the Argentinian accent, but I couldn't understand a word they were saying down there. Uh, anyway, good to see you. Good morning. Sergeant Bilko, good to see you. Carrots are working. Andrea Mowbray, yeah, injections are working. PB, sheep. Yay, sheep. Good to see. Thank you for the sheep emoji. That that that, that perks me up. Uh, we've got uh, who else in here? I think that's all the people. Milchman, too. Good to see you. Thank you for waving the hand. Uh, also, uh, the JVlog, first vaccination, Yakiniku, second uh, vaccination, a ticket to the Upsco Cafe. I'm not sure that that's socially, uh, given that I'm doing it out of a sense of social responsibility, I, I think that would cancel it out more than I would. No, that wouldn't really be a good thing to do. Also, I've heard after the second um, shot that you really do get knocked out quite badly. I've heard that um, now I'm having family members in Australia and New Zealand get them. My dad got the Pfizer one and the second one really knocked him out. My my stepfather in Australia got the um, he, he got the AstraZeneca one and the first one apparently that one knocks you out. And they both basically just slept for a day, which sounds wonderful, but it means I'm going to take that into account when I schedule my shots. Um, yeah, AV 84K, they say it's probably, they, they'll say that it's not more deadly than the flu, probably. Yeah, yeah, I mean, people, people say lots of, lots of things for this, but, uh, yeah. Sure, but Spanish accent is close to Colombia, not like, much like Mexico. Yeah, it's an interesting accent. I, I like the sound of it. As an English speaker, the Mexican accent of Spanish is actually very friendly. It's very easy, you know, like the pronunciation is quite close to English, so it's easy to Spanglish. <laughs> Uh, more than more than you know the the way that the Colombian you don't drop the s's like the Caribbeans do but but yes uh, but it's kind of cool it's not it's not overdone so yeah it's, it's a nice accent good stuff anyway next story um, boom um, so the the vaccine numbers how are we doing in Tokyo well uh, the Delta variant now we're not using um you know the the china virus and the england virus and the india virus anymore uh, which i'm glad uh, it, it's a little bit tiresome and stupid to be focusing on where it came from when frankly it's just just something that's here um, but the delta variant is increasing it was really the reason that osaka was so much worse than tokyo was that it was more widespread down there but the cases in tokyo it is are increasing and like in other countries where it's popping up like in the uk it is driving uh, although the numbers have been going down slowly over a period of time and we've gotten down to like 300 something cases a day we had today 376 cases uh, up from 304 on sunday last week i.e 72 it's up 72 cases week on week on the same day um, and more people are going out because the numbers are coming down the government also announced the other day that since numbers are coming down so much and totally not because it's almost the olympics they are going to exit the state of emergency and go into the extended set of health measures where there'll still be limited restrictions but it won't be a full-blown state of emergency i.e all is well in the school is what the prime minister is saying uh, but of course, the Prime Minister is also saying, you know, but of course, we were very worried about a rebound. Well, the rebound started happening this week. Week on week, the, the case numbers started going up again in Tokyo and, and not dramatically, although today was kind of dramatic, at least week on week, like percentage wise, you know, going up 72 from 305. That's like nearly 25 percent. Right. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean we've never had a lockdown here in tokyo it's all been voluntary um and and I, and I appreciate the way that it's worked like that it feels like whenever i talk to uh family in australia in particular just everything down there seems like so crazy like you know one person coughs sideways and they lock down <laughs> queensland has become like an independent country um where they're even blocking interstate movement now and uh you know like the lockdowns in melbourne and so on sound awful but i mean credit to you the result is that you've you've kept really close to zero cases we've been a lot more chill with hundreds of cases here in tokyo i don't know if that's a good thing but i do feel like it's it's made it more manageable um but yeah it's already going up again and we are still under restrictions like like most restaurants are still closed at night and they're talking about reopening them uh and you have the olympics about to start so yeah the government's concerned that tokyo's in for a rebound are i think valid and i'm worried about them as well 
And if they're really worried about a rebound, honestly, they shouldn't be loosening up the restrictions on restaurants and what what not at the moment. So we'll see next week when I do the show next week how things are going. But um, given how quickly uh, after the last state of emergency ended, we were back in a new one within four weeks, and we're four weeks from the Olympics right now, which would be bad timing. I actually feel like they they should just keep the state of emergency on. I don't see how it does any good to be lifting it, especially now that we have the scary Delta variant increasing here that looks way more contagious. So we'll see. Anyway, I, I, I am getting the hell in. I'm going and getting that shot, the, the vaccination, as soon as I can get it, because it's not, you know, it's not getting safer. The, the variants are getting more scary. So that's the thing that's happening here in Tokyo. Shubis, you're in lockdown there on Sundays. I didn't realize that you could catch it on other, you know, that you couldn't catch it on Saturdays or Mondays. <laughs> well, you know what? That, that's exactly the same in Tokyo. They they force the restaurants to close at eight p.m. and everyone points out what? So you can't catch COVID nineteen at seven p.m. Um, you know the idea is they're trying to discourage people from going to restaurants by making them close early so people cancel their plans. But of course, people are just piling into the restaurants earlier, and you know it's it's not exactly very logical. But but there we go. Like Shibus there. 